Team ähm, <laughs> yeah, you you're welcome to when I'm I'm reluctant my lord you must know that is because I'm I have to be extremely cautious. Yeah. Yes, that's why I'm looking at my learned friends because No, I don't think I should accommodate them a lot. Uh Mr. Kanyangela, you remember in your testimony, you indicated... Sorry, l let me then hear both sides. Yes, it's just fair that you hear both sides before. As it pleases you, my lord. I don't know how long it's going to be with this cross-examination, but we know by 4 o'clock they should be taken back. We've not made any special arrangements for today. Um, for the applicants to stay beyond the allocated time period theology. Will it be a sin if we sit until at least quarter, until quarter to five? Uh, I'm not certain, Your Lordship. We've not communicated with the authorities. I'm sure we can go at least until quarter to five. As it plays a quarter, Your Lordship. Yes. in chief Mr. Nganyagala you testified that my client Mr. Ngapunya has an undisclosed interest in one or two entities that's correct and one being in Jago Investment and the other one being Wanakatu is that correct that's correct um, you referenced a particular agreement. That's correct. And that agreement, you also would agree with me that it was allegedly, or as you testified, you said it was found from my client's computer. That's correct. Can you confirm to this court that the agreements you were referring to, they are unsigned? You see the agreement between Mike Nipunya and Filippo Smapopi, who is the owner of Anakadu, was only signed by Mr. Nipunya. Uh, can we go to the page that you are referring to? It's a document that was provided to me, and it's not... I don't know whether it is in the bundle. Okay, there is one on the, on the bundle. Yes, if we can maybe start with the one on the bundle. Which bundle? On page 202. Uh, if you can assist us with the bundle, because the I, have the, I have the Deloitte bundle. The fiscal bundle. All right. Page 202. Your Lordship, 
the first document that was referred to is at page 283. Uh, for the first document that he indicated is signed by Mr. Nipunya, it's at page 283. Exhibit T. Start with the one that is on page two zero three. Two zero two, sorry. Mm -hmm. Exhibit Z thirty five. Yes, exhibit Z thirty five. Are you looking at it, Mr. That's correct. I'm the, looking at it. The one that is written memorandum of agreement entered into between Mike Ngepunya and O'Neill Shudifonya. Is that correct? That's correct. That is the one that I said, is it correct that it is unsigned? It's correct, it's not signed. There are no initials attached to that document. There's no initials? Of any of these individuals. That's correct. And can you confirm that when this information was, as per your testimony, extracted? from this equipment, Mr. Ngepunya was not present. That's correct. When it was printed, downloaded, etc. That's correct. There is no confirmation certificate that it was not manipulated in any manner whatsoever. That's correct. You have also There is also no evidence or certificate from anyone that the document was retrieved in its original form. There are statements that the, the, the late people gave. Yes, but we don't have that statement here. We extract such information. Yes, but we don't have that statement here before court. Yes, the statement is not before court. Yes. We don't have any evidence before this court that the computer from which the information was allegedly obtained from was in use at that time by the person who it is alleged was in control of the messages in that computer. Is that correct? Yes, it is not in the report. Yes, but we don't have it before the court. I'm only interested in what is happening before the court. Yes, that's correct. Yes. There is no information that it was also preserved and the method in which it was preserved. Yes, it is not there. There is no certificate in our disclosure whatsoever as to how and which method of preservation was used by the individual that could have preserved this information if it was so preserved. We don't have that certificate. We have a statement of the person who provides such device. Yes, if you have it somewhere else, it please say that to the, the court. Disclosure. Yes, I'm, I'm saying before this court. Before court, it is not here. All right. There are no server details that were provided pertaining to that document. Which server was utilized pertaining to this document? Unless I have to confirm from the report itself, but... Yes, but we don't have that report here, so what you do in the comfort of your office, if it's not before the court, is not helpful to us. I'm sure you know where I'm going. Which report is being referred to? When he says we don't have that report here, which report is being referred to? I just want, because we have a document before court, so I just want clarity which report is being referred to. I'm saying there is no report provided to us pertaining to the authentic authentication process 
or authentication of this document. It can't be that difficult to understand that. In our record here, we don't have that information. Is that correct, Mr. Yes, that is correct. Yes. In fact, there is no evidence that we can use before this court today that this document was not muffed or superimposed to create the content of that document. I don't know what you mean by that. All right. There is no evidence that this document there is no evidence or certificate from an expert that the alleged document was not subsequently edited, comma, added, or altered after it was allegedly removed from our client possession. Is yes, that there is no such evidence. In fact, there is no metadata of this information. Accompanying, there is no metadata certificate accompanying this document. Is that correct? That's correct. There is no descriptive metadata of this document. There is not. Descriptive metadata of this document about the resource. You're using very technical terms. I, I am you and technical. I don't understand what metadata is. I can be very technical, my lord. <laughs> but I'm a simple person. <laughs> but player. help us to understand. <laughs> yes. Let me describe it, my lord. Yeah. There is no. Descriptive information about a resource that was used for the discovery and identification, including elements such as title, abstract, author, and keywords pertaining to that document. We don't have such certificate. No, we don't have it here. We don't have any structural, structural metadata. That would be information containing and indicating compound objects, how they were put together, for example, how pages are ordered to form the chapters, or the pages and the paragraphs. It does not describe the types, versions, relationships, and, ad and other characteristics of digital materials. Would that be correct? That is correct. So we have no way whatsoever of verifying that Mr. Ngepunya was the author of this document. But it was retraced from his device. We, we know you always reach a conclusion. This is no longer your process. It's in the report. Yeah. This is no longer your process. It's a process of and the I court. Took it, yes, it is in the yes. report. There is nothing to assist this court to reach that conclusion except your mere say so. Is that correct? Let us leave it in the hands of the court. No, is that correct? That's what we are doing now when I ask you these questions, is to actually to assist in leaving it to the hand of the court. Yeah, to what, what you have just mentioned before this, there's no evidence before court to support. All right, thank you. The, the next one as well that you spoke about, that will be on page 200 and I believe 83 that you referred to earlier. You see that one? Yes, I see that one. Yes. This will be the document from page 283 to 288. You see that? That's correct. And this document was also downloaded or was also extracted, whatever method it was used, in the absence of Mr. Ngepunya. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, there is no original version of this document. That's correct. Uh, we only have this, this copy that is here. Is that correct? That's correct. 
My client testified in regard to this document that the signature that appears on page 288, you see it? I'm seeing it. That is not his signature. It's an electronic signature that was on one of the computers that he was utilizing. He did not sign this document. Would that be correct? That is the instruction I gave to you? Yes. And that is his testimony? And you can't dispute that? I cannot say it's, yes. it's not his signature because his name is standing there. Yes. He said he was not present as well when this document was equally downloaded. And yes, he was not present. There is no accompanying information relating to this. Yes. To this information and this contract on page 283. Is that correct? Just correct. There is also no evidence that this information was preserved in its original form at the time when it was allegedly downloaded, which we do not know. Is that correct? Yes, correct. And also that no evidence that the computer from which the information was allegedly obtained was in use at that time by the person who it is alleged was in control of this information at that particular time. Yes, correct. Also, no information that, or no certificate whatsoever as to how and which method was utilized in preserving this information. That's correct. The details of the server. Is it the same? Yes, the same line of question. Then so. just ask him whether it's rather than All right, being Malone, repetitive. I was waiting to be directed as such, Malone, because okay. it saves time. Would, yeah. would I be correct that also all those other certificates and methods that we discussed in regard to the previous agreement, your answer will be the same for this one as well. That's correct. All right. My client denies that he signed these agreements, or he entered into these agreements, or prepared these agreements. But he might he have benefited from the an agreement. These payments were made between himself and the person with whom he, is, he entered into the agreement? Yes, but that is disputed as well, but the question is focused on the integrity of these documents. That My is client, what you're saying, that he yes. did not sign, but I believe, I'm still sticking to that, that he, he's the one who signed the agreement. All right, but insofar as we are concerned, uh, before this court, we have no proof that he was the one that signed this agreement. You were not correct. there when he, it, correct. You, you were not there when he allegedly signed this agreement. That's correct. All right. Yes. My client testified that during his employment at Fishco, he had no power, authority whatsoever in the determination of what the government objectives are. Do we have any comment? Yes, he have no power. He also did not have the power to challenge a national minister in regard to the determination of the quotas under the Marine Resources Act and or the National Fishing Corporations Act. He have no such power. He also testified that at all times, and we have seen this as well when you were testifying, you introduced, you know, um, an audit from an entity called Steel Fenter. You remember that? Yes, I can remember. Yes. He testified that at all times he received what to him were lawful instructions pertaining the harvesting of the quota and the directions as to where the revenues from those quotas had to be effected to yes, or that paid is, to. That is what you should say. He also testified that he was always transparent in his dealings with the quota of his employer or allocated to his employer for government objectives, amongst others government objectives. That's why he provided a paper trail and showed that that allocations and the payments as directed by the government were audited and such reports were provided to the national minister that was in charge at that time. 
is that correct? Yes, it was provided to him, to the minister. He testified that to prove this, he also relied on, amongst others, Z17, Exhibit Z17. It will be on page 71. I believe, my lot. I submit that will be the fish core bundle. You said Z17, and then you say Z71. Oh, Z17, my lord. It's a bit late, my lord, so <laughs> it's 17, not 71. My apologies, but it will be on page 71. Okay. I think that's where my, perhaps my slip of the tongue could have come from. Page 71 of that. Yes. You'll see that, Mr. Kanyangela. Yes, I see. And he testified that for every year in which the quota was allocated, he would provide a full report per the directions to the government, the Honourable Minister, who also signed to confirm that all the monies were used in line with the directions of the government. Especially when you have regard to page 71 of that bundle. Is that correct? Can I just refresh the question again? Uh, repeat the question again. All right. He also testified that in his dealings as the CEO of Fishco at that time, when he received instructions pertaining to the allocation of the fishing quota, its usage, and where the amounts have to be paid, he always complied with what he believed were lawful instructions of the minister. And that's why at the end of the year, he would always ensure that those implementation of those instructions was also audited by the external auditors of the company and a report provided to the government so that they can get feedback in terms of how the government objectives were utilized. The quota allocated for government objectives was utilized. Yeah, well, I can say that Looking to the, this report of Steel and Fenter, comparing to the allocation letters that came from the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources on government objectives, I see on the report there are some companies that is appearing on who have been alleged to be, have benefited from the government objectives, but they are not on the list of those allocation letters of the ministry. Yes, we will come to that. But at least the report confirms what he says, that, that is he was transparent. Is. is that correct? That is correct, yes. because he was the one who was providing this yes. information to student center. Uh, I would like to, to beg to differ. Uh, you say he was the one as if he was the sole source of information for Steel and Fender. Steel Fender's report a statement saying so. That he, they compiled these documents on the information provided to them by the applicant. All right. You do understand what external auditors of a company are and what their role is. Is that correct? I partly understand that. Yes. Not fully. It's okay. I also don't understand all the times, but um, not we have certain provisions, copies of provisions of the, the Companies Act that I wanted to, because I anticipated this. I 
I have copies of a lot of the companies act pertaining to uh, certain aspects of the law that I just wanted to to highlight quickly with the witness. I don't want to take too long. No, no, they are separate. Five copies. But the point that I wanted to make is that uh, external audits, auditors of a company in terms of the Companies Act, they have certain powers to access all the information as they deem appropriate from a company that they are auditing. That's correct. And therefore, if according to them they were satisfied with whatever information that they obtained at that stage, my client does not have control over that. But they, if they were not satisfied, they could have asked for more information if they were satis not satisfied. Would that be correct? That could be correct, but I, I will say that these people, this report, or these documents that we just referred to, mm -hmm. is a document which compared as to the usage of the governmental objectives that was allocated to FISCO. In the same company or the same associates, we're also the one who was dealing with the financial statement of FISCO or Seaflower itself. They were providing different reports. They were doing the financial statement of Fishco and Sea Flower and the subsidiaries. Hence, they were also compiling this report, which they alleged to be from the information they got from the applicant. Yes, that is correct. You are correct that they provided two reports. Yes. My client testified here about why those reports were provided. And he was not challenged on that aspect. He testified that there was quota that was allocated by the minister for fish course own commercial benefit. That was the property of fish Corps. Oh, just correct. Yes. I can confirm that. Yes. He also testified that insofar as the quota for the government objectives, sometimes there will be a portion that will be allocated therein for FISCO's own commercial benefit. But most of that property belonged to the government, and the government determined to who and where that money would go. The minister would give that directives. That's why I said... That's why... Sorry, let me finish because it will help. That's why it was audited separately because that was not the property of FISCO. It was still the property of the government. Yes. So that's why they were audited separately. There was nothing unusual about them being audited separately. He testified about that. He testified about that. And I, confer I can confirm that, yes. All right. The two reports could be Yes. He also testified that as FISCO they were advised by their financial experts that including the property that was not theirs in their own books would also attract tax liability for something that was not intended for FISCO. You wouldn't be able to dispute that. Is that correct? That was his testimony. Yes. yes. So let's come back to where I was driving it in terms of the, the accountants or the auditors, TF Enter and Associates audit that we were looking at at page 71, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So he testified that, and you already read this into the record, that on the face of it, it appeared as if the minister as well signed and approved the report of these steer Fenter Associates, is that that's, correct? That's correct. Yes. And my client says 
he had no say in the determination of who was to be paid. All he did was to act as the owner of the property that was the government, represented by the minister, determined that the property had to be utilized. Is that correct? I don't know why he's saying he was not in the capacity of directive of giving direction as to who is to be paid. As what from the information we get from the statements we obtain from sea flower staff for fish cost staff. They have indicated that their government objectives were only dealt with by his office alone. That may very well be so, but he says all the agreements that we refer to, the designation agreements, you remember we, we, we read through the yes, designation agreements? Yes, I remember. Yes. Uh, they were clear that you know, he did not have a role to determine to determine who he had to be paid. He only implemented as directed by the minister. And towards that, he would provide a transparent audited annual report to the minister to confirm that his instructions were implemented by FISCO as per the minister's instructions. And those would often be signed as I referred to you in this annexure. If there were such directives from the minister with regarding to payment or instructions, I never come across such. Yes, but you came across this report where the minister confirmed that the payments in here were exactly to his instructions. We can go through Can you just refer me to where he is indicating that? You, you testified about a report similar to this earlier, is that correct? Yes, or I, this report? Yes, I report. I, I yes. testify on it. You also read it into the record. And that was in respect of page 29. Let's go to page 29 maybe and cut to the chase. Page 29. Yes. Z18. Page 29 is Z9. Yes, my that's what I think, but the one that my little friend is showing me here, I believe it's in the blue. My apology, my lord, it's in the state, the blue file of the state. I have 10 blue files. <laughs> my lord. Um, yes, it will be on page 29, my lord, of the, the Nangoma file. Hmm. Let me see what I see. The Namgoma files, the, the, the exhibits are why. Let's go back to page 71 that we had earlier. We're looking at. Yes, I'm there. In connection with the, I'm reading the text now because this is the, the, the letter that was written to the owner of Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources. Is that correct? That's correct. The intention was it, it was the intention there of, for confirmation of third party quota granted through the National Fishing Corporation of Namibia, FISCO, and approval of the amount remaining to be retained by FISCO. Is that correct? 
That's correct. That was the heading of that document. It says, in connection with the 30th of September 2016 audit of FISCO, we noted that FISCO received Hague and host mackerel quota from your ministry on behalf of third parties and as well for governmental objectives, full stop. That's correct. We understand that there was a verbal agreement between the Honourable Minister and the CEO of FISCO that should there be any balance remaining from the proceeds of the third party quota, the balance should be retained by FISCO. In light of this, we have drawn up a schedule with the total quota received by FISCO on behalf of third parties. The total proceeds received by FISCO from the quota comma the amount paid over the beneficiaries as well as the balance still in the hands of FISCO. Is that correct? That's correct. The attached schedules have been summarized on the next page. Will the Honorable Minister or his representative please confirm whether FISCO should retain the balance or not? You can confirm directly to us. And they also gave their email there, Steel Friend Associates Chartered Accountants. The Honorable Minister agrees to the quantities, you see that. The Honorable Minister agrees to the quantities of quota shown as received by FISCO on behalf of third parties. Also, the Honorable Minister allows FISCO and its subsidiaries to retain for their own benefit the balance of 6.4 million, 6,436,968. Is that correct? That's correct. This report was approved by the Honorable Minister or his representatives on 3 February 2017. Is that correct? That's correct. And the details of each payee, how the amount of quota that was allocated, to who it was to be paid, appear all the way to page to page 78 of that audit report. Is that correct? That's correct. So my client says he was very transparent in the manner he carried out the, instru the instructions of the government. He was simply an implementer of the government instructions. He had no role in determining who has to be paid, what has to be paid. He simply implemented to the exact as directed by the government, particularly the minister. I don't know as how that directive was given. As I said, from the documents we received from the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources and the document we received from FISCO, we could not come across such directives. Yes, but he says based on this, this supports his, and he also testified in this, on this during his testimony in chief, this supports his version that he was accountable to the government for the government assets that were placed under his control when he was the CEO to implement on behalf of and for the government. I will dispute that he was accountable. Well, he was too honest when he was really dealing with this governmental objective quotas. To me, he was not honest. He was a dishonest person. Yes, so we are happy that you are not the judge in this matter, but at least there is a written report of external parties qualified to make this kind of assessment except you. Yes, you can take it as it is. Yes. Uh, what was the source of this document? Did you get this document from the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources? Some we get it from the Ministry, some we get it from the from Steel and Fenta Association. Yes. All right, so you did not obtain this one from my client. <laughs> Which one of your client? Mr. Angepunya. From your client? Yes, you did not get this document from him. No, we did not get it from All him. All right. Go to page 79. 79. Yes, I'm Yes. My client says, you know, just like the other. Is it the same? Yeah, report is. Okay. Yes. Remember the other one was for 2017, if I am correct. We can look at it, maybe you're right. No, I'm on 79. This one is for 2017. Exactly. So 
It is also, in a nutshell, the same report. Just correct. My client also indicates that he was always transparent and he accounted fully to the government in respect of his own property. And that's why he doesn't understand why he can be held criminally liable for something that he was given instructions and fully accounted to the authorizing official or government functionary. And he was transparent. He made sure that all those quotas were audited, the payments, the specific amounts into which and beneficiaries into which those payments were made. And therefore, he was so transparent that he doesn't understand why he's been prosecuted in this case for playing criminal activities with the government property, which is the government governmental objectives quota. Yeah, he can say that he was transparent because he was carrying this instruction knowingly as to what he was doing. The person who was giving instruction to him is a co-accused in this matter. And it's part of the syndicate that have just benefited from this governmental objective quotas. There's no way he can, he can say, okay, he can go against such instruction because he know what is the benefit that will come out of it. No, because he was obliged in law to carry out those instructions. But you, it was illegal instruction to say. Some of instruction was illegal. Well, that is your view as what is legal and yes, what is that not is legal. You see, here is the dilemma that we also face. Government officials make decisions quite often, exercising the powers in a statute, an act of parliament. It's part of our law here in Namibia that unless those decisions are set aside, they remain valid and binding I'll with legal correct. consequences. I'll just correct. Those instructions are not wearing invalidity on their foreheads. The law it's says even... <laughs> well, my lord, that's what our judges have said. I don't know, but that is our law. That up until it's set aside and declared invalid by a competent court of law, it remains lawful, even if it's unlawful. Just correct. You know why? Because Namibia is based on the constitutional pillar of the rule of law. Yes, Mr. Patela. Yes, my lord. I you, 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 are, you are engaging the wrong person. You must engage Mr. Yes. Lutibeti on those legal No, issues. my lord, here I'm testifying. I'm engaging you, my lord, before they yeah. start. I'm getting a head start. <laughs> you, 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 you're engaging the wrong person. That one won't know the law. All right. But it is good that... Yes, just, just ask him questions. Let yes. him answer on, on factual yes. issues. Yes, so... Yes. Would this be correct that my client, at least on the face of these documents, he implemented the instructions of the government and he fully accounted for how those instructions were carried out. He made sure that external, independent auditors of the company inspected that information and they provided an audit report to the government. Your Lordship, we've dealt with this issue before regarding audit reports on these governmental objective quotas. As it was indicated that these are letters, they are not audit reports. So if he's referring to an audit report, now is there another report that we are not aware of or is he referring to these letters that he just um, referred to now? No. The first sentence and then we can play semantics. In connection with the 30th of September 2017 audit of FISCO, audit of FISCO, not a party, audit of FISCO, mm -hmm. they undertook this task. It was part of the audit. No, what they say, <laughs> In connection with the 30 September 2017 audit, we noted. Yes. They note what was happening with the audit. It doesn't say this is the audit. Yes. But they go ahead then and do a verification exercise. 
And, 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 I, and I think Mr. Lutibet is correct. Remember, we had this debate. Yes, Palo. And then we agreed that we are not going to call this a forensic audit or an audit. Yes. We, we agreed at the beginning. But it's a report of the auditors. It's a letter addressed to the minister. <laughs> Uh, All right, no, well, here we agreed. These are issues that we agreed at the beginning. All right, my lord. I, I have no problem, but yeah, yeah. yes. But at least insofar as this letter is concerned, this yeah. document is concerned, mm -hmm. I'll refer to it as a document, my lord. Okay. Um, because I don't want to accept that it's so shallow as to be at the level of a letter. Um, but yes, insofar as this document is concerned, it's a letter, Mr. Yes. Yeah. And now, it's addressed to the Honorable Minister of Ministry of Fishery and Marine Resources. Yes. Yes, Your Lordship. And I know in cross-examination of Mr. Ngipunya, we read the statement of, I put the statement of um, the auditor straight vented to Ngipunya indicating what these documents are, that they are not audits, they are letters addressed to the minister. That is part of the record, Your Lordship. All right. Insofar as this document is concerned, it was signed on the 21st of February 2018 by the minister. That's correct. Officials at that time. It also provided details, if you go to page 80, of the, do, the, 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 the those... Um, page 80? 80. 80. Yes, my lord. Okay. Yeah. It provided the, the details of the quota that was allocated. Is that correct? That's correct. If you go to page 81, Although mine is there is a bit of a, a photocopying cut off there, I believe it was part of the it, it would deal with what I believe is quota sold for twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen. If you look at the top that's correct. of that table. Yes, that's correct. And there are details as to who this quota was allocated to and for how much it was sold, etc. That's correct. Uh, that goes on all the way to page eighty uh, page eighty two, is that correct? That's correct. I do acknowledge that page 83 is a little bit uh, difficult to read. A lot a part of that, I believe, what I believe is that report is already exhibits that is already before the court. But they are all details all going all the way to to page 89. Is that correct? Of that document. That's correct. That will also apply in a similar way, my lot to the document that ap that appears from page nine zero. That was signed by the Honorable Minister on 23 January 2019, the bottom date step there. This document would also go all the way to page 98 of that document. That's correct. Yes. But one does not sound or want to sound repetitive. But I know that some of these documents are exhibits. I'm not so sure whether all of them are exhibits. Yeah, they are exhibit 18, Z18. Yes, my lord. I just wanted to make sure that all of them are accommodated. Yeah, from, from page 79, let me see. 71. Page, okay, the one on page 18. Yeah, 79. Actually, page 80, page 80, through to page 84. Lord, may I ask that they, are exhibit. they all be accommodated to page 98, so that all those documents, then we can be free to argue them, if it's necessary, as and when, because I have pointed them out already to this witness. Page up to? Up to page 90, 98. Yeah. 
I think that whole document should that not be exhibit Z19 until page 98 from page 90. Z19 is is with respect to the the year ending 30 September 2018. So what what I did um, as I'm saying. The documents that were admitted into ev evidence as exhibit were stopping at page 84. So I have no problem to, if one goes through up to 89, to, to be under Z. As if there's a court, Z18. As if there's a court. No, my lot 98. No, 90, remember what I said. From page 90. From page 90 up to page 90, 98, those documents relate to the 2018. Yes, my lord, yes. that is correct. They are Z19. Indeed, my lord. The Z18 starts at page 80 up to 84. And then you ask me to just accommodate the balance of the pages up to page 89. As it pleases you, my lord. Yes. I mean, data to his lordship, my lord. All right. So, I, I'll accommodate them. As it pleases you, my lord. My lord, uh, it's... Okay. Yes? You had directed us to proceed up until... Quarter two. Quarter two. I see, unless if my watch is aggressive. No, no, it's normal. Uh, see, please, you, my lord. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but you are not yet done with cross. It doesn't appear so, my lord. All right. Yes. Uh, but I'm almost at the tail end. It's just that what I want to put in now to the witness. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, what do we then do? You, you're starting at 10 o'clock. Yes, my lord. Uh, we will wait for you until 11.30. Yeah, I think that is fair, my lord. Yeah, we'll yes. wait for you. Instead of standing down to quarter past two, we'll wait for you until 11.30. Yes. And I'm sure an hour will be sufficient for you to wrap up. Yes, my lord. We, I, we have submitted extensive heads of arguments. Yeah, no, no. I say an hour. Yes. Not in your argument, because right. that, that one I don't direct. Yes, my lord. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking of you, are, you, are, you will need an hour, if you have an hour available to you. I'm sure you'll be able to... To wrap up. Yeah. That, that is correct, my lord. And then Mr. Know. Engelbrecht has got four hours. Although I'm yeah. always over-promising, but yeah. not delivering as promised, but I believe an hour will be more than fair, my lord. Okay. As it pleases you. And then Mr. Engelbrecht has got at least four hours to himself. Yes, my lord. As the court is. No, I don't want to put you in a tin. Oh, my lord, that, will, that also all depends what will happen tomorrow. <laughs> and I believe that I would try my level best in also to wrap up the cross-examination by tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. I don't want to put you under any pressure whatsoever. I take note of that yeah. as well as my So, mind. yeah. All right, um, we will wait for you until 11.30. Uh, what I'll do is I'll ask Mr. Engelbrecht to keep, on, keep an eye, and he must at least just notify everybody on your readiness to come and proceed with uh, cross-examination. I mean, that's if, can, if Mr. Engelbrecht can give everybody at least 15 to 10 to 15 minutes uh, indication that you are now ready. I mean, that's to his so lordship, my lord. Just As he pleases, my lord. Right. Will, court, yeah, I will then just adjourn until 11.30, but that's just for administrative purposes. If you are done earlier, we can start earlier. If As you are done later, you can start later. I mean, that's to his lordship, my lord. All right. Yes. Court then agents until 11.30. Let's go. All right. Mr. Kanyagena? <laughs> the same admonition still applies. You may not discuss this matter with anybody.